Hello class. In this video, I would like to look at equations with variables on both sides when some weird stuff goes on. In the last video, we looked at just our standard equations with variables on both sides. So let's review that real fast. One, our main goal is to get X by itself. But unfortunately, we've got a couple of X's that we've got to deal with. Okay, so if we review our rules or review our steps for this, we know that the first thing that we need to do is get our letters on one side of the equal sign. So we need to collect all of our letters on one side. The way we do that is we add the opposite. The next step, we need to collect all of our numbers on the other side. And again, the way we do that is add the opposite. And then the last step, once our letters are on one side, our numbers are on the other, we should be able to solve. And the way we do that is we do our opposite. Okay, or do the opposite. So if I have a multiply, we do a divide. If I have a divide, we do a multiply. So let's review this equation real fast. So our, our goal again is to get our letters on one side. Most people like to have their letters over on the left. So I want to move this 2x over to be with the 5x. So I'm going to start at the equal sign. And the way I move this 2x is I add its opposite, negative 2x. So 2x plus negative 2x will make it go away, plus 23. Now if I add the opposite, this negative 2x to one side, I have to add that same thing to the other side. If you remember, you know, we've talked about that balance, that seesaw idea, where this 5x plus 8 is on one side of the, the seesaw or the balance, and the 2x plus 23 is on the other side. So if I add anything on one side, I have to add the same thing in order to balance it out. Okay, so 5x plus negative 2x plus the 8. So now this is balanced. I added the negative 2x to both sides. Now we simplify. On the left-hand side, I have 5x plus negative 2x, which gives me 3x plus 8 equals. And on this side, my 2x's will cancel each other out, make 0, and I'm left with 23. So now I've collected all my letters on one side. Now I need to collect all my numbers on the other side. So I need to get this 8 to move over to the 23. And again, the way we do that is we add its opposite. So 3x plus 8 plus negative 8 to make it go away. And again, if I add this to one side, you have to add the same thing to the other side. So now on this side, on the left-hand side, my 8s go away, and I'm left with 3x equals... And on the right-hand side, I have 23 plus negative 8. Okay, so 23 plus negative 8, our signs are different, so we subtract, and we get 15. Okay, if you're having trouble with the integers, okay, getting the right number, please make sure you type it into your calculator. And now I have a multiply by 3, so I divide by 3 on both sides, and we end up with x equals 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So if I were to have plugged this 5 back in, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 8 gives us 33. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 23 is also 33. So that tells me that answer is correct. So that's how we do standard problems. Now let's look at some non-standard problems. Okay. So here's our first one. Now when you look at this, you probably see, ah, it looks the same. Okay. So when we gather our letters on one side, something's going to happen. So let's see if we can do that. So I want this 9w to be gathered over here on the left. So I start here at the equal sign. 9w plus negative 9w plus 7. And then over on the right-hand side, I've got 9w plus, well, I added a negative 9w on this side. So negative 9w plus 3. So when I simplify this, you'll notice the 9w and the 9w here, they actually go away. And we're left with only 3. On the right-hand side, my 9w's also go away. Okay, they add to give 0. And I'm left with just 7. So, this is one of those occasions where our letters disappear. Okay, and you will have two such type problems that will do this. Okay, so when the letters disappear, when they go away, they add out. You end up with an equation that says 3 is equal to 7. Well, you ask yourself, is that true? And no, that is not true. It is not a true answer. So we know that this is not a true statement. This is a false statement. 3 is 
not equal to seven. So what we say is in this particular one, there is no number, no real number that I could put in W to make this true. So the answer to this one is actually the empty set. There is no solution for this one. So you can say the empty set or no solution because there, is there are no real numbers that I could put into W to make this a true statement, All right? So sometimes if the variables in an equation are eliminated, they disappear and the resulting statement is false, the equation has no solution, okay? So let's try another one, let's see what happens. Okay, now you should be able to recognize this, okay, if you end up with one of those kind of situations. So when you see the same exact number on both sides, you know something's gonna happen, okay? The same exact variable identity. So this one, if you were to move this 3w over to this side, 3w plus negative 3w plus eight, 3w plus negative 3w plus one, because I add the opposite to both sides. Again, my letters go away. We're left with one equals eight. If this is a false statement, then the answer is you put a line through the equal sign and the answer is either the empty set or no solution. Right. Now let's look at one more. Okay. What if I were to give you something like this? Okay. Well, sometimes when you see questions in this fashion, you can actually do some simplifying before you begin. If when you look at these problems, you notice anything that can go together, you go ahead and put it together. So you'll notice that this three and this four, I could actually put that together, okay? So if I do so, I end up with five M plus, well, three plus four is seven equals five M plus seven. Now I just told you that you should be able to recognize when something strange is gonna happen. If I have the same number on both sides, such as five M and five M, the same variable combination, then we know something weird is gonna happen. Okay, so if, I get rid of this M. I'm gonna move this 5M to be with this 5M. We move things by adding its opposite. So I add a negative 5M to this side. So on the left-hand side, I also add a negative 5M plus seven. So again, my variables are eliminated. They go away. But this time we end up with a statement that's not false, but a statement that is true. Seven is equal to seven. Okay, so in a situation like this, any number, any real number that I plug into M is going to make this a true statement. Okay, so I can say all real numbers for this solution. Because if I plug in any number into this one, let's say I plugged in 2 to this one, I would end up with 5 times 2 is 10, plus 7 is 17. Plug into a variable, five times two is 10, plus seven is 17. Any number that I plug in will work. So we have two situations that are kind of strange here. Okay, the first situation was if our letter combination is the same, but these numbers are not equal, we have no solution. If our variable combinations are the same, but our numbers are equal, then we have all real numbers as our answer. Let's try one more. Okay, now this one's really kind of strange. It's got a lot going on, okay? So the first thing I see in this one is I see lots of minus. So before I do any simplifying, I'm going to change all my minuses. Change minus to plus, the 15 to a negative. Minus to plus, the 4z to a negative. The minus to a plus, the 2z to a negative. Now is there, oh, and then this minus to a plus, the 15 to a negative. Now we're gonna combine anything that might go together. Okay, so if you look on this left side, the 10z and the negative 4z can go together to make a 6z. Okay, plus negative 15 equals. Now on this side, we end up with the eight and the negative 15 can go together. So we end up with negative 2z plus, and the negative 15 plus eight gives me negative seven, okay? So now this one looks to be like a standard problem. So now we solve it. I get the negative 2z, move it over. So negative 2z plus positive 2z plus negative seven. And then 6z plus 2z 
plus negative 15. Okay, so our 6z and our 2z make 8z plus negative 15 equals, over here my 2z's are eliminated and I'm left with negative 7. Now I need to move the negative 15 to be with the negative 7. So 8z plus negative 15 plus 15 equals negative 7 plus 15. Okay. So my 15's are eliminated. I'm left with 8z is equal to, and then 15 plus negative 7 gives me positive 8. Now when I divide, I end up with divide by 8, divide by 8, z is equal to 1. Simple as that. Now, what are some other things that we could do in this particular lesson that would use these type, this type of equation? Well, we could have a word problem. In this particular instance, this is kind of an application. It says Daisy's flower sell a rose bouquet for $39.95 plus $2.95 for every, for every rose. A competition florist, or a competing florist, excuse me, a competing florist sells a similar bouquet for $26 plus $4.50 for every rose. Find the number of roses that would make both florist bouquets cost the same. Well, in this one, we've got to actually write an equation. So this one says that we've got $39.95 plus $2.95 for every rose. Okay, so the constant in this one is 39.95 plus $2 for every rose. I mean 2.95 for every rose. Well, I don't know how many roses, so I set that equal to R. Well, that's equal to this other side, which is $26 plus 450 for every rose. Okay, so that's going to be $26 plus 450 for every rose. And again, it's a rose. So we build the equation and then we solve it. Okay, so this is a standard equation. So you just do exactly like we've been doing the whole lesson. One last one. What if I have a geometry problem like this? This one says write an equation to find the value of x so that each pair of polygons has the same perimeter. Then solve. So I'm trying to determine what value of x can make these perimeters be the same? Well, we know perimeter is nothing but the sum of all the sides. Okay, so if I were to, to look at this one, we'll move this one down just a little bit and write the equation right here. So this says I'm going to do perimeter. So on this triangle, that says I'm going to do x plus 6 plus x plus 9 plus x plus 3. And that's how we would find its perimeter. And we want their perimeters to be equal. So we're going to say equals. And then on this side, we've got to be, we got to make sure we understand the perimeter. Here I've got x plus 1. So what does that make this side over here? Makes it also x plus 1. Well, what about this side right here? Well, it's also x plus 4. So on the other side then, I'm going to have x plus 1 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 4. And now, like in the other questions, we put together anything that we can. So here I've got an x, x, and an x, which on the left-hand side gives me 3x, plus, well, we've got a 6 and a 9 and a 3. So 6 and 9 make 15, plus 3 makes 18. So that's the left-hand side simplified. Now let's look at the right-hand side. We've got an x, 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 x. So that gives me 4x plus 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4. 1 and 4 make 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10. And now you'll notice that we have our standard equation with variables on both sides. And then we just go, we solve it just like we've been solving it. So in this video, we looked at not only just standard equations with variables on both sides, but some of the strange things that can happen when you have no solution, or you have all real numbers, you know, all those kinds of things could happen, even an application problem. I hope this makes things a little bit more clear.